Mr. Pop. Dark. When the little birds are nasty, and I listen to them too, there's two lonesome people in the whole wide world. That's me and the man in the moon. We're here. We are. Hello. <laughs> Hey. Hello, friends and investigators. Welcome to Miskatonic University Radio. So tonight, thank you so much for joining us. We are here uh, with some new spoilers from the Innsmouth Conspiracy. So FFG has shipped us some cards to show you all. Uh, <laughs> we're going to be talking about some new cards. So we kind of already showed uh, Harrison had, had done a good job at, at showing you guys just the right amount of these cards uh, up until now. And we're going to take you guys through these, and we'll talk about like what combos and cards we can play with them. <laughs> should be should be pretty cool. Uh, should we go... Thanks so much for being in the chat. Should Welcome. We... Should we go straight to the first card, or let's do it? Yeah, these guys right. seem, seem to <laughs> seem to want to uh, check these things out. All right, here we go. We've got the Blessed Blade. So uh, this is a guardian asset, cost three, has a combat icon. Uh, it's a picture of several swords, but one of them looks, I would say, a little bit more blessed than the rest, <laughs> more more blessed than the rest, maybe. Uh, yeah. So it's yeah. an item, weapon, melee, blessed. Action, if blessed blade is ready, fight, you get plus one combat for this attack. If a uh, bless or elder sign token is revealed during this attack, it deals plus one damage. Before revealing chaos tokens for this attack, you may exhaust blessed blade, to add one blessed token to the chaos bag, and of course it takes up a hand slot. So that's pretty cool. This is like the most Zoe thing that's been printed since Zoe herself, right? It's a very, very <laughs> Zoe themed weapon. It's debatable whether it's good for her, but I'll still put it in all my Zoe decks because it's a blade. Bl I mean, it, it's definitely uh, the, the funny thing about the the Zoe stabbing obsession uh, th that some people have is that you wouldn't you don't actually stab with a machete, right? It's for like kind of hacking, sort of. But something like this, you could definitely get a little bit stabby with, I think. <laughs> yeah, and what what more does Zoe want than this, right? So like, I mean, it even adds blessed tokens into the bag. So, I mean. While it doesn't have the consistent plus one damage, it's kind of a cool supportability. Um, <laughs> Super Dem in chat. Father Mateo goes kill Bill. Absolutely. This is going to happen. Father, people are, who are playing Father Mateo is going to put this in their deck. Um, <laughs> Dane, is, uh, Dane is right, though, that you know normally kind of like the first thing that we look for in a weapon is that ability to do like a consistent plus one damage. Um, but, I mean, with this, it's just sort of hard to judge how consistent it will be because... We haven't seen the rest of the Insmith cards, so we don't know how many ways there will be to put blessed tokens in the bag. So we kind of have to we kind of have to wait and see how that will turn out. Yeah. I like that it uh, that it's kind of um, them like dangling over uh, like d dangling machete back to you because um, it yeah. just kind of feels like it, but you have to get to build a blessed deck for it or just run with Mar Sister Mary. Yeah, like Sister Mary, she adds two at the start of the game. Um... And I, I, I don't know. I guess this, this kind of seems like it could be like a fun off weapon. Like maybe you, you use this to finish off like three health enemies or one health enemies if you don't have a way to ping. Um, and then when doing so, you can add a blessed token to the bag uh, to help you out in future tests. But then you shut down the then you shut down the, the blade for the rest of the turn. Yeah, yeah. But you use it to like finish something off. Like you sh you know find a three health enemy, you shoot it with your gun, uh, and then you stab this to, as the final attack. Oh, I didn't yeah. notice that that you can't uh, you can't like use this to do you know one damage and uh, you know put a token in the bag and then do it again. Um, but yeah, I mean you know maybe maybe you don't need to do that that often. Well, I mean we're talking uh, in the investigator packs card named Galvanize. Here's here's a little combo piece for it, right? You can use Galvanize to unexhaust this, put another thing in the bag. Um, but we'll have to see how many more blessed things come out. Like, because we got Sister Mary right now, putting one in the bag every turn. Ideally, if you're hitting a hitting a uh, monster every turn, you're going to get another one in the bag every turn. So, it seems pretty good. I mean, it's I, I think it's probably better used for its uh, putting blessed things in the bag. But um, mm. 
a little less consistent on the damage side of the spectrum, but yeah. If if you can ramp up to having like ten bless tokens in the bag, or even like eight or something, then it still has a okay chance of doing extra damage. And if you're using if yeah, Mateo can use it. So if you're somehow using this Mateo with some type of token manipulation, or um, someone else that's blue and purple, I can't remember. I guess Sister Mary is a class purple, right? Or Diana, maybe. Or Diana, yeah. Uh, either one of those maybe can combo that to like fish for the blessed tokens. So that could be fun. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to see because you know maybe there will be a blessed hat and blessed shoes and uh, you know blessed, <laughs> blessed track shoes, blessed whatever. Maybe there will be a card, an event called like Have a Blessed Day, where it just dumps a whole bunch of blessed tokens in the bag. We we just don't know, so we'll there we we'll, go. We'll find out in October. Welcome. Thanks for joining us on the stream. So you're going to actually give up a good question, kind of in closing for the card. Uh, can you get a blessed token after another blessed token and do plus two damage? Uh, I think no. I'm pretty sure there's a rule somewhere that says, like, when something references token, it also can mean tokens. So it's it's just, like, one. Yeah, it doesn't say for each. It just says if yeah. any, right? So usually when we see yeah. that, it's, yeah. But so they did add token, parenthesis S, because they fixed themselves there. But yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh. We want to move on to the next card. All right, let's do it. Let's go to the next card. So next card is uh, obfuscation. So here's a rogue card. Uh, this is <laughs> this is the one. I don't think anybody got it, but it's a uh, it's a spell. It's a two cost level zero spell. Um, asset costs. Uh, I'm sorry. Gives a combat symbol. Uh, it's fast. Uses three charges and a trigger. Uh, when an enemy makes an attack of opportunity against you, spend one charge, cancel that attack, and takes up a spell slot. So this is a really quick way to prevent some damage if you're, you know, running running away from something and you absolutely have to like resign or something like that in a turn. A um, little tough to get it to to actually happen uh, in in any sort of like conducive way, I guess. I feel it's like a backup card for like maybe you get yourself in a situation where you need to play assets uh, or other events that would provoke an AO to deal with something. Um, so you play this down first as a fast to, to dodge stuff. Yeah. Um, but I feel like it's not something you would just play. I don't know. It, how many symbols is that on it? Just one? It is. I mean, you can kind of imagine a worse version of it where it was like a fast event that just says like ignore AOs this turn because uh, it's like three uses so you could kind of like use use it all up in one turn for three actions but this is sort of better than that because you can maybe use a little bit of it this turn and then a little bit of it later um, but I kind of agree the fact that it only works on attacks of opportunity means that it, it's more about like being able to do things on your turn and not have to worry about enemies it's more about that than it is like just generically protecting you from stuff right. I guess the use for this is if, if you play this then you don't need to worry about pre-playing other other assets until you actually need them uh, to do that's true else. that is true yeah because yeah. you know maybe you never draw an enemy that you actually need to shoot with your gun or something or or that it's really nice that it's fast like that is a really good drawing point and i think that a couple of people in chat here mentioned a couple a couple interesting synergies we've got captain Franny saying uh more ornate bow encouraging nonsense yes absolutely <laughs> for the times that you oh, miss yeah. and you have to knock your bow again You've got obfuscation to help you out. Programs with wolves saying Trish loves this. Absolutely. So Trish, her ability um, triggers when when she gets a clue, she can either auto dodge something or she mm -hmm. can get another clue from it, right? So, I mean, I, I'm honestly kind of surprised that it has Dexter on it rather than Trish with that with that uh, comparison here. Well, I mean, it, it has Dexter on it, but it also has Dexter on it, and also Dexter and Dexter and Dexter. <laughs> so it's not. It doesn't just have Dexter on it. It also has Dexter. I feel like any card has the potential to have Trish on it too. Isn't she like a spy? She could do that Mission Impossible stuff. Yeah, one one of these, if you look really closely, is is Dex is Trish in a disguise, probably. But, right. Um, I, I know that I get myself in a lot of trouble, so like I'm interested in kind of seeing this and like allowing myself to use like Dynamite Blast without dying, like just just um, well, like I guess to myself. But um, a lot of the time, Dane's like, "Don't use that! Don't use that! You're going to take all these attacks of opportunities." I uh, can take the three damage, but yeah. But I, 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 I do think that like for like I, a, I'm I'm planning a skids. For, uh, yeah, Harrison, I, I, you're lagging out. Yeah, Harrison, Harrison, unfortunately, is falling down the the lag hole. But uh, <laughs> no, but but I I do I I think that like the low player count Trish use case is pretty pretty good. Uh, I was thinking about maybe a really ridiculous skids deck that would like 
use this to kind of run around and corral up all the enemies and then use grenades or something and try to uh, yeah. what, what level is the grenade mark two is that like too high for it's level four so oh, you okay. can do it with leo yeah you can do it with leo. yeah i guess you do it with leo but <laughs> there's there's probably better ways to do that like with warning shot or something but i mean i think what i gathered from what harrison was saying is that he's, he's using this with skids and specifically dynamite and everybody has there's that age old thing where oh i can just throw a dynamite and clear this whole room oh no you're gonna get aoo'd by 50 million enemies don't do that <laughs> i'm i'm pro anything that encourages more dynamite use so that <laughs> <laughs> I, I I like I like where our brains are at. Although I do feel the need to remind everybody that the upgraded dynamite you just ignore it was, but <laughs> you know, that's true. But but, uh, but I mean you know maybe you have an enemy on you and you're like moving a couple spaces onto another enemy or something. That's that's right. Yeah. yeah. I guess the reason Dexter's on this card is because they wanted to make it a spell. Mm. And he's a magician. Well, Trish is not a magician. I mean that so. yeah that, that does explain why Dexter's on this card. But why is Dexter on this card? <laughs> I mean, Dexter is the only one who could play it for for free, technically, just with like a Robes of Endless Night Out and his ability, he can he can crack it for uh for super super cheap. By super super yeah, cheap, I mean right. zero. He can, he can yeah. play Robes of Endless yeah. Night. Is that just better though, for him? Because that lets you play spells for free. And I guess he'll probably running a lot of spells. What I mean, this? Th I mean, it's really good. this helps. It, it's really that this allows you to move. I think is the, like the other thing about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Because that's like usually those are the two things that provoke AOS. It's like moving or playing cards that are not fast. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shall we? Anything else about obfuscation, or shall we move on to the third and final card? The Let's third and final card. card. All right. <laughs> here we go. All right. So this last card is. Promise of Power, it is a mystic skill with four wild icons on it. It is practiced and cursed. After you commit Promise of Power to a skill test, add one curse token to the chaos bag. If you cannot, take two horror instead. And it, features, uh, it features a picture of a woman making a mistake, or a man, I can't tell actually, uh, by reading a book, which we all know is very dangerous. Uh, <laughs> the book appears to be a cookbook that teaches you how to make a single dish which is toast no so <laughs> correct me if i'm wrong so we might go through our regular mur like uh you know uh parade here of, of me being like my initial like thought when i saw this card i was like oh my god this is ridiculous this is like so many skill icons on one card and like completely undermining the fact that it can either a put a curse token in the bag or b make you take two horror if I'm assuming the only way that you can't put one in there is is either if um, if there's so many there's curse only, tokens in there that you just can't. There's only so many in the box. You can only fit so many in the yeah. bag. You can only put the fact that you, you can't take the horror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that just seems really good. I don't know. The other thing that I noticed about it, it's practiced, and and who else loves practice and it's perfect, right? Like, come on. Oh. <laughs> Oh no! I mean, yeah, I don't know if you uh, want to commit this too much. I don't know if you want to double down on this one, maybe. But uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, good. It really depends on how the curse tokens all play out. If like, you don't have too much information yet, we've seen a couple of like those covenant cards. Like, there's the secret covenant that like converts curse tokens into plus ones or something. So, yeah, for sure, there are decks you're gonna be able to build that are like loaded up with curse tokens, but then convert those into good things, um, or just hope your friends draw them instead. Be like, eh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's really too it's early it's it's really too early to see how the blessed and curse tokens are going to play i'm really excited about it because i think it's an interesting new mechanic in terms of making you reevaluate how you play but my like initial take on it is that blessed tokens are going to be okay but not that great because a lot of times on like standard you'll draw them when you were going to pass anyway curse tokens are going to be horrible because it's going to be like adding like a minus six to the bag rarely you know <laughs> so, so so that's that's kind of my feeling is just keep in mind that like if you're playing on standard with like the type of decks we normally play, or, or even on hard in most situations, bless tokens might be like curse tokens might be like more bad than bless tokens are good. Does that make sense at all? Yeah, uh, no, I it, agree. Yeah, I mean, if you play at higher difficulties, you might be just trying to avoid draw from, drawing from the bag anyway, though. So it might not matter that much. Right. To yeah. Put stuff in. Sukradam brings up that uh, you can copycat it to just grab it and put it back in, you know, the deck. And, you know, just run it, repair it. <laughs> Kuradir does make a good point. Uh, curse tokens don't matter too much on hard plus, just because like you've got a minus six. So if you draw a curse token and then a minus six, I'm imagining anyway. This this would be the mentality. 
um, you could just get you'll just get a negative eight, and it'd be the same thing as drawing the negative six. You know, like you you're not really really ex excited about pulling it, from the bag at that point. It really depends a lot on the kind of like shape of the like curve of what tokens are in the bag. Like I, I think in some situations, yeah. like depending on how the skull is scaling and things like that, it could be. But yeah, I think in a lot of cases that that might be true. Yeah, yeah, but there are a lot of tests that you make that you you know you might have just be like even on or plus one on and you're or even plus two on and that just completely throws off the map even just one chris token in there could kind of ruin a crucial Cause, test because because on standard you're doing like you're trying to do like a lot of tests somewhere between like plus two and plus four is like usually what you're kind of shooting right. for um yeah 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 i do i, I want to see if, oh, sorry go ahead Harrison. i want to see if uh Kuridir is gonna be uh using the the curse tokens in 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 their nightmare mode <laughs> I was going to mention that. I, I feel like the yeah. Although th this uh, isn't this isn't the payoff that you want, but in general, of course, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think. Uh, and and I think when we first saw this, uh, Dane mentioned something that I think was a, was a good point, which is, in a sense, this isn't really necessarily what mystics want in a lot of cases because mystics are so focused on just using willpower, they don't necessarily need the question marks. They don't necessarily need four symbols they can just get like static boost to their willpower but for off class mystics so somebody like uh, patrice or like a safina this is like potentially uh, a better you know yeah exactly i mean that's what i was thinking more of like honestly somebody like diana who uses her strength kind of in the early game to to hit with maybe a chain of blade or some some uh, shriveling would would benefit from this greatly cuz putting her putting her will or whatever she needs to a 5 plus early on until she can get her stuff set up and everything might be pretty good and even at the cost of a curse token like if it's just diana solo or diana and another person by the late game her will is going to be like seven or eight anyway so the curse token might not even matter when it comes down to it, it it's also we're, we're going to wait and see because again there, there might be a you know yeah so far like token of faith would would actually be able to like help you with the curse token once you grab it but we have yet to see like other assets who give continual, um, you know, benefit for for uh, drawing uh, curse tokens and and bless tokens and things like that. So, do we know if the cursing, I mean, the curses and blesses are going to interact with the scenarios for the Innsmouth conspiracy? I think they said that that would happen. Yeah, I mean, if they're going to do it, it would have to be in Innsmouth. That's where the box happens. I think when, <laughs> when we when we talked to Jeremy, I think he said that it would there would be a, a limited amount of that. Like it was more going to be on player cards, but there would be at least some of it. So. Yeah, but as I said, I'm expecting there to be some combo of nonsense that like wants you to put <laughs> curse tokens in the bag, and then you try to try to draw them to trigger other fun effects, and your friends try not to draw them. Um. <laughs> <laughs> one, uh, one, one, one last thing I'll say, uh, speaking of, uh, I mentioned earlier, like subclass mystics, speaking of main class mystics, if there was this same card, but it just said, forget about the curse token, just always take two horror when you commit it. I would absolutely play that in Agnes. That would be great. Get your ping in and uh, mythos phase, like when just commit it to something. Sounds great. I would totally play that. So Dan's going to be playing some weird deck where he crams 10 curse tokens into the bag immediately. <laughs> that doesn't sound like me, but I mean, we'll, we'll see. I don't know. Well, I, like I said, we have to, we have to see what the other ends with cards are. So. All right. Uh, any, so yeah, so right. those, those are the three cards that, uh, that, that we got to preview. Very, very exciting. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Thanks so much for everybody hanging out, uh, checking out these new cards with us. I'm sure that they'll go on spreadsheets and people will be talking about them for a little while. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll post the, the card images on our website, mur.fm, right?